Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. It is a beautiful Wednesday here in New York City. Hey, Claude, HYD. Hey, Jax, I'm feeling good. Happy hump day to everyone. Make sure to hump someone you love, whether that's your partner, your significant other, or just your dog. I already humped Theo this morning, so I'm way ahead of schedule. Oh, wow. Speaking of hump day, where is Theo? Oh my, he's far. He usually likes to watch the action, but he's just not interested in the show anymore. Well, if you want your heart to die, last night we were watching Handmaid's Tale, which I have to talk about. I watched some of the most fucked up episodes. I couldn't, like, it was just awful. Um, And he hopped off the bed, like, and he was dead asleep and it was so weird. And he jumped into the love sack and, like, spent the majority of the night there. I mean, he just loves the sack. He puts the love in love sack. So true. Wow, that is so cute. Um, Also, just on the subject of Theo, not really a great segue. We recorded a Patreon episode yesterday, me and Claudia, and um, it might go down as our strangest yet funniest episode of all time. Um, I'm going to post it later today, but it was, we could not stop laughing. And I don't know if it was because it was the first time we recorded an episode together in person in In the longest time. And we were just like feeding off of each other's energy, but oh my God, we were legit like peeing, sweating, crying. And it's so funny. So head over to patreon.com slash morning toast. It'll be up like right after this episode. Most of um, the episode is just both of us like wheezing into the microphone. So I actually think people will enjoy it. It was so random. The theme of the episode was we tried to follow in the footsteps of our, you know, fellow YouTuber, John Krasinski, and do like a good news themed episode where we reported the past five good news stories of quarantine and it was just like the thing about good news is that it's always good but it's not necessarily interesting so there's not much to say when like somebody does a nice thing it's very sad but it's like it's just not nearly as interesting as like something salacious so Jackie and I for like the first 10 minutes we're just like reporting on these stories like so nonsensically and then once we realized like what we weren't even speaking words like it just turned out to be so funny I really feel like you guys will enjoy it it was one of my favorite episodes to record in a really long time yeah, but also because we got to record it together, which yeah, I just missed that magic. But speaking of magic, yesterday's episode of The Morning Toast just like got me through the day yesterday. It's been a long time since I've just been like so proud of a show that we've done where it's just like I can point to multiple moments that I think back and laugh about. And I just like, I don't know what was in the water yesterday, but it was such a funny episode and it really well, just made me laugh. Now that you brought it up, I think that we have to address the major elephant in the room which is the comma. Oh my God. Okay. We need to address the comma. I called Claudia yesterday because I saw that she put a comma in her Instagram bio and that was not what we had discussed. She also put a period, which we had discussed and decided you were going to leave it open-ended. So you just went completely off book. Um, Also, when I went to screenshot it to post it on the Morning Show's Instagram, it just looked a little unfinished. So I Googled the phrase just to see if there usually a period, like I just wanted to see what, you know, the intellects were saying. And on brainyquote.com, which is a very reliable website, it said, law is reason, comma, free from passion, period. So I copied Brainy Quote and everyone was making fun of my like grammatical vibe. And I'm sorry that I'm an intellect. Okay, two things are happening here. One, you are a comma abuser. And so when I first saw the comma, I was just like, oh my God, she's just like dropping commas left and right. Like, what is she I doing? abuse commas. I, I take that. I'm not denying that. I fully like don't know proper grammar. And I just like put a comma whenever I feel like I should breathe. And the other thing is that, yes, perhaps the exact Aristotle quote is law is reason free from passion. But you were quoting Legally Blonde, quoting Aristotle, and that one goes, the law is reason free from passion. I guess that's true. Should I take it out? Yes. And it should be the law. Because otherwise people don't know that you're, they they think they're actually quoting Aristotle when they see that they don't think of Professor Stromwell. But if they see- Are you telling me that the creators of Legally Blonde didn't use brainy quote? Like there's no the- no, they were taking their own um, creative liberties, even though, like, the law is reason. Oh, action. I took out the comma yesterday. I guess I, like, fell into the peer pressure, but I'm leaving the period. Okay, but can you put the in front of law? Because that's the quote that's on the blackboard in I Ridley just did. Bond. The law is reason free from passion. Love it. So if you want to go to my Instagram, take a look at my Instagram bio and then click the link in my bio and pre-order my comedy special, Disgraced Queen. Now available for pre-order on iTunes. It will be available on a few other platforms afterwards, but make sure to get your pre-order and to support a burgeoning comedian. Thank you so much. Love you. Have a great day. Blessed. Do I, do I look tan today? I've been your working arms. on my tan. 
your shoulders. Worn, I've been using tan lux um, because I, my skin was turning green in quarantine. So I've been doing like gradual self tanning every day. And I think that I'm getting tan. I've been doing it as well. I've been on the, this is not an ad. Jackie and I both, I bought the Tan Lux drops and then I hooked it up for me and Jackie. I got us both the full line of products and I've been doing the face for most of quarantine. It's the only thing keeping me looking like a morsel of a human being. Um, But now that I got the full products, I did my legs last night. I finally shaved my legs. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really like dedicating some time to my body and soul and I feel really good about it. Like I've, I've been tanning just everything and I feel like you can sort of tell sort you can yes it's, it's only day two yeah yesterday when you asked me if you look tan like I you didn't but you actually do look tan today yeah well I felt tan you know so mm-hmm. that counts tan something. is definitely more of a feeling than like a visual thing yeah, yeah like I felt like I was just like walking around like I had a fresh spray tan on but meanwhile no oh I'm so dramatic like I put the stuff on my legs and I like get into bed and I like sprawl out I'm like Ben don't touch me yeah, no, totally. But no, it hasn't seen my sheets. Honestly, um, when I got the Tan Lux box, a lot of people were asking me to do reviews and stuff. And this is like my review. It's fabulous. Definitely get it. Um, I'm obsessed and it doesn't smell and it doesn't stain your sheets. Not an ad. Um, I wore makeup all day yesterday. Like I just didn't take the makeup off. Like I worked all day in my bed with a face of makeup on just because I didn't want to let like my morning of hard work go to waste. And I have a, f- a few fresh pimples. You can't really see it on the Zoom, but I'm pretty excited about it. It's just something different. Oh, that's exciting. I thought you were going to be upset and then be like, darn you, makeup. No, it's like proof that like my, like I'm still human. Do you know what I mean? Like all the orifices are working. Like sometimes when you lay in bed for days at a time, you just feel like nothing. Yeah. Like a robot. Yeah. Um, So of course, Jackie and I are going to deliver the Fast Five. We are also doing Dear Toasters because it is our weekly advice segment today's wednesday so if you ever want to write in you can write into dear toasters at gmail.com we will always keep it anonymous and we cover anything from quarantine quarrels to whatever whatever you got for us we'll take what you can get and then we also have a new segment today which i am so fucking excited about so yeah, we'll share it when we get there like it's gonna in- be a treat waiting for you after the fast five yeah and it was an idea i just have to say um that happened so naturally on the patreon episode like we were just talking that's why i'm really excited for everyone to hear this like pretty much irrelevant patreon episode but it's so important no it's so irrelevant like your life will be completely the same but you will just have like i think it's a short one too it's like 32 minutes of just like pure energy laughter joy like i'm pretty sure and if you hear any silences ever it's because we're fucking wheezing because we're silent laughers wheeze city yeah Totally. Okay, we- okay. I think we should get right into it. I had like one more thing to say, but um, it has escaped my mind. So without further ado, it is time for the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <sighs> oh no, she's frozen again. I feel like she has something to say and I don't know if she's going to get a chance to say it because she's frozen. She's frozen in a funny position too. Let's hope something to say. Soon. Can you hear me? Now I have something to say. Now we can hear you. something to say. Oh, God. Now we can okay. hear you. I, you were frozen. I know. I realize that. I could hear you the whole time, and it must have been delayed, so don't yell at me. <laughs> I have something to say. Please. <laughs> actually, I take that back. I think you have something to say, and I think you actually might want to sing it. Wait, I have a few things that I like to sing. So do I want to wrap it, or do I want to sing it? I think you want to wrap it. He just took a DNA test, turns out he's 100% Russian, even when he's fleeing countries. Yeah, he's got heart problems, that's a puppy in him. Bling, bling, then he solves them, that's a doctor in He could have had a bad tigs, noncommittal, helped you with your welfare, just a little. You used to hold him down, and now you're holding him back. And that's the sound of his wolfiness leading the pack. Why tigs great till he gotta be great? Don't text him, tell it straight to his face. Best friend sat him down in the salon chair. He needs to be groomed. It's been three months in the queue. That's it. Love you. Mommy's got to work, but I love you. Hi, little man boy. What Jackie was trying to say, but maybe you didn't get it. Today's episode is brought to you by Embark Vet. Oh, I'm out of breath. Give me a minute. You. <laughs> 
<laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you were walking your dog and someone stops you with a how cute what kind of dog is it and you don't know you're not alone every year millions of dogs are rescued from shelters and that means there's a lot we don't know about them you can finally know your dog with an embark breed and health test from breed traits to genetic risk factors for health conditions, Embark provides the resources to help you and your vet best tailor care to your dog's specific needs. You know, a lot of the um, rescues and shelters in New York are completely empty because people got dogs in quarantine. So I feel like it's never been a better time to be an Embark vet customer. 100%. Over 50% of dogs are either at risk or a carrier of genetic diseases, whether they're a purebred mix or a, whether they're purebred or a mix. And Embark can give you a leg up when it comes to knowing their health story. It is the best dog DNA test kit on the market. I got one a while ago and TBG just got one because he um, just rescued the cutest dog. And it was just so cool. Like they send you like a little Q-tip, you like put it in little Theo's little mouth and then they give you label. It's so easy. And then they just text you when the results are ready. And it's just so interesting because Theo, you know, he's an above average dog. He has a 3% wolfiness. Yeah, that's wolfy as hell. The Embark Dog DNA Test Kit is the most comprehensive kit on the market, market, looking at over 350 breeds, types, and varieties, and 175 genetic health conditions to help you best care for your dog. It is the only company with stellar customer service and vets and veterinary genetics geneticists on staff to talk you through your results. It's super easy to get started. It's great if you're a dog mom, dad, dog uncle, or if you know someone who's obsessed with their dog, it's a great gift too. It's the best in class dog DNA test kit. It is number one rated highest by customers. Um, and I think that everyone really just needs to get themselves an Embark test. And if you go to Embark, E-M-B-A-R-K, V-E-T dot com, you could check it out. Use the promo code TOAST to save 15% off your dog breed and health kit. Visit Embark Vet, E-M-B-A-R-K, V-E-T dot com and use the promo code TOAST to save 15% off today. Embark Vet dot com, promo code TOAST. That's an exclusive offer you can only get here, so make sure to check it out. Amazing. Okay, first story. The big story of the week is slowly coming to an end. Alex Cooper released her first solo episode of Call Her Daddy, Single Father, called The Funeral, um, where she explains what the show's going to be, what, you know, she's been up to. She talks a little bit about the drama in the beginning and just sort of more about her stance on it, talks about new formats for the show, and then she does Q&A where she talks more about Sophia and Suitman and kind of actually drags them, um, which yeah. she hadn't done up until this point, but there were some harsh words in, in that. But um, the first episode is here and she's, she's going it alone. Yeah. I feel like before this episode, I had faith that like, maybe it wasn't like the great divide. Like maybe they didn't despise each other. Maybe like they could in a year, like make some sort of reunion. I don't know. But after the podcast, which I listened to bits of, I just um, didn't listen to the whole thing, but it's clear that she said some, some unkind things about Sophia. So it's, I don't think there'll be any sort of reunion anytime soon. No, I don't think so at all. I listened to the whole thing. Um, there was some new information, but more so stuff like just about like how their relationship has been deteriorating for a while now. It wasn't like they both went up to Dave's roof, like best friends, so excited, blah, blah, blah. And then it just split from there. Like there was a lot of stuff brewing under the surface that eventually came to a head. So this was going to happen at some point somehow. Um, there was a lot of just like resentment and stuff going on. And now that's why we're at where we're at. Um, she did a good job. I think her next episode, she's going to have Dave on. And I imagine they're going to talk about this some more, but I, I do think it's, it's time to move on. Yeah, no. And like, you have to, the show has to exist outside of this drama because it's not going to last forever. And it is a new show now. It's very, very hard to host a podcast by yourself. Like I think I am the funniest, most charismatic person in the world and I couldn't do it. Like it's so hard. So I, I look forward to seeing what like the actual podcast is, not the podcast that's just recapping the drama, which I'm living for because the drama is, you know, everything of the sort. Yeah. She said that they're going to do a new segment um, where they bring on, in quarantine it'll be via phone interview, but they're going to bring on like members of the daddy gang to like 
participate and like tell their story or whatever and just like sort of vibe with Alex and you never know like where things might go and who might be her like one of those people could be her next co-host but it seems like she's really invested in the daddy gang community honestly the way she was talking about it I felt like I was listening to a description of like camp toast and the toasters like I completely understand her love for the community and just like what they do offline and I completely fucking get it yeah, wait, when you said she's bringing on members of the daddy gang, I'm like, damn, that sounds terrible. But now that I think about it, like, the girls who, like, are obsessed with daddy gang and who would, like, opt to go on probably have, like, the craziest stories, like, from college. Like, like I could never go on. I would literally have nothing to say. But now that I think about it, it actually sounds like a great segment. Yeah, no, people have, like, wild stories. And they, I'm sure their listeners are so interesting, just like them. So I think it'll be interesting And that's a good way to, you know, mix it up because you can't always do an hour alone. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it really just makes me think like how grateful I am that we're sisters. Like, obviously I love you, but I'm just a very like inherently jealous person. And if I had had like a business with someone who I didn't really owe anything to other than friendship, like, I don't know, I can't imagine I wouldn't just be looking out for myself all the time. And I would have found myself in a situation like this. Like, that's just me, but I can't do anything to you because you're my sister. Yeah, it really is interesting. So now I try and think about like duos who are just friends who aren't family, who aren't even coworkers where it's just like, a, like you know, there's a clear line. Um, yeah. How can anyone even make it work? Like, I mean, if you have a relatively like unremarkable show, I don't think it's that hard, but there, and there aren't so many duos who become major stars in, in podcasting, but in anything else, like in work. Um, so I think it really only becomes like dicey. It's very Josie and the Pussycat Dolls, you know, like they were a trio and then they weren't. Yeah, that's true. I guess when you hit that level of fame so quickly, like it's hard to make sure everyone like feels good about everything. Um, but now that I think about it in like podcasting world, there's so many duos like that do fine. <laughs> That are yeah, well, you know who I think is a great example is like Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad. They're yeah. very successful, and but they just have like so much love and respect for each other. I don't, and also by the way, they, they work for a media company. It's actually quite similar because their show is iHeartRadio. But iHeartRadio, I think, is a little bit more buttoned up contractually than Barstool. So like, I think the Barstool environment thrives off these kind of. Um, moments in the media and they almost even encourage it so it I don't think it could ever happen for like a Becca Tilly and a Tanya Rad. yeah it just wouldn't be so publicly but there might be like private drama yeah but they work yeah. great together yeah they do so it can be done I just yeah. I think there were a lot of different factors that made just this, like a perfect storm like Alex really goes into like the history of Sophia and Suitman's relationship and like how from the beginning like she found him to be very controlling and then like once they were in a relationship, Alex felt like it was her and Suitman who were call her daddy. Like Sophia was always just like saying what Suitman said. So like Alex's partner mm-hmm. is now Suitman and she does not know this man. And that was frustrating for her. So um, I could see how that's frustrating. But also if I was your friend and like I confided in you about stuff about my boyfriend and then you like, even if we're fighting, like you put that on air, like that would actually really upset me. Of course. I didn't think about that because I'm sure they're roommates. Like they know everything about each other. So this is like, they have ammo on each other beyond just what happened in the deal. Yeah. And I'm sure there's so much more. I'm sure there's stuff Alex didn't say. I'm sure there's stuff that maybe Sophia could say, but won't say. I don't know where they're even going to draw the line in terms of messiness. But um, last night was really the first, the podcast, like she really sort of just turned and, it, but it also requires an explanation, you know? This man was in your guys' yeah. lives for a year. Did he just wake up one day and say, I think I'll own Caller Daddy today? Yeah. No, and the answer to that is no. I would agree. No, yeah. Like, the wheels had been in motion for a while. Well, I'm just curious to see where this goes. Yeah, me too. But I'm glad the show's back on track, back on the air. Um, and I wish her the best of luck. Truly. Women supporting women podcast hosts. You got this, girlfriend. You can call us if you need any advice. Totally. Okay, next story. A little legal news. Haley and Justin Bieber are threatening to sue a plastic surgeon over surgery claims. A Beverly Hills plastic surgeon's blowing up on TikTok after posting a video suggesting Haley Bieber's had some work done on her face, but now it's got him in legal hot water with Haley and Justin. Dr. Daniel Barrett's been hit with a cease and desist letter by the couple's lawyers who claim he's using Haley's name, image, and likeness in his video without permission to advertise his practice and spread false, uncorroborated claims that Mrs. 
Bieber has undergone plastic surgery. On top of that, Barrett's being accused of copyright infringement for his use of lyrics from Justin's song, Sorry, in the caption. Damn, they are going in. Yeah, they're like going in on this random doctor. And while I do think like doctors who use TikTok to like promote their practice and then like take down celebrities, like this whole thing's fucked up. But at the end of the day, I don't know if it's necessarily illegal. There used to be a segment, uh, not a segment, um, like a series in one of those tabloid magazines, like in touch people where they had like prominent Beverly Hills, LA doctors taking pictures of celebrities and being like, this is where she got a nose lift according to Dr. Nazardin or whatever. Yeah. She got a nose lift filler. There's the line for the facelift. Like technically you don't fucking know that, but I don't know if this is necessarily illegal. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. I mean, it's interesting that they're even spending their time on this, but I understand it's frustrating like to just putting, you know, the kibosh on it for once and for all. Yeah. And I can't say that if I didn't have the money and resources that Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber have, like I wouldn't just be petty as fuck. Yeah. I don't know if I would be. Seems like there's better ways to spend your money, but maybe they're just trying. I don't know. For some reason, maybe this just really bothers them. Maybe she really hasn't had any surgery and like wants to prove to the world who always says she has surgery. Do people like, always also, say she has surgery? Maybe they do. I just don't care. Like, I think she's beautiful. And if she achieved that face with the surgery, like, cool. Like, that doesn't change that for me. What is with yeah, the surgery cool. shaming? Cool. Give me the name of the doctor. Yes, please. I will take a referral code. Yeah, for sure. This is Anyways. just, like, weird and random and I don't I I mean I don't know the law and I but I do know that the law is reason free from passion but I don't know the specific California law and I don't know if this is considered illegal yeah but this does feel like passion and so if it's reason free from passion then I don't think this will hold up in court yeah that's like the formula yeah so spoiler alert that's the thing about the law though it's so reason free from passion yeah Okay, this next story is so infuriating. The vi- not the outcome, the video itself. A lot of people have probably seen it, but a woman who was in a park with her dog, not on a leash, who calls um, 911 and says that there's a black man threatening her. If you haven't seen the video, like I want you to watch it just so you know what we're talking about, but it's so uncomfortable and- It's disturbing. very disturbing. Yeah, But update, Amy Cooper, the white woman in a recent viral video seen calling the police on a black man who asked her to leash her dog in a wooded area of New York City's Central Park, has been fired from her job. Franklin Templeton Investments, an asset management firm, announced its decision to terminate Amy on Tuesday, just one day after footage spread across social media that showed her berate Christian Cooper, an unrelated black man who was birdwatching in the area and who told her to put a leash on her dog because her dog wasn't on a leash and your dogs need to be leashed. There's a big sign in the park. Yeah, no, there are certain areas where I think you can take your dog off a leash, but I don't, I hate seeing dogs off their leash. Like, it just, like, this, it's anarchy, you know? Like, we were talking leash, we're outside. Like, when they're inside, they get off a leash. Like, I just don't get it. So this woman was, like, so nasty, and the video's just really, I don't know what, what other word to use other than disturbing. Like, what, like, literally, she's standing 10 feet away from the guy, and she's on the phone with the police saying, this black man's threatening my life. Like, he literally couldn't be further from you. It was just, like, it's very disturbing, and I am, oh, And another update in the story, what was also really disturbing about the video was that she's like manhandling her dog by the collar around his neck, like literally choking him. She's like so why the dog is like crying and squirming and yelping. She doesn't even realize she's fucking choking her dog while she's like trying to protect the right for him to not be on a leash and she's choking him. Just put him on a leash and he won't choke. She surrendered the dog to a local shelter after much outrage. Whoa. Yeah, so I can't stress enough, like, how anti-cancel culture I am, but every now and then, there is just a certain je ne sais quoi, like, a certain situation that just requires it. Yeah, like, this woman was just committing, like, a bevy of disturbing crimes in one video, and, like, it's not even like she's a celebrity, so, like, this is the way she acts in her regular life, and it happened to go viral, like, thank God, because, like, maybe she'll change her behavior, like, everything she was doing in this video... It's so fucked up. Jackie, this is the way she acts when she's knowingly being filmed. Yeah, she thinks she's in the right. Right, and she's so, like, grounded in her beliefs, and, like, she knows she's on camera. Yeah. So that's her filtered-down version. Yeah. No, this woman is nothing of the sort. 
I have to say she's been china Like, I hope that all this backlash will make her realize, like, she's completely in the wrong. She needs to rethink who she is and what she's doing. She needs to rethink who the fuck she is. She's <laughs> been also, like, releasing statements. As she spoke to CNN. And it's strange because they're very well written. I don't think she has a publicist. I think she's, like, a, like, maybe an, like, a educated person um so i just can't i don't understand how you can just like work at a finance like you can work your way up and just like also be so dumb yeah she said it was unacceptable and you know words are just words and i can't undo what i did but but i sincerely and humbly apologize to everyone especially to that man and his family wench wenchy vibe okay so wenchy yeah. Are you ready for our next story? It's just some exciting streaming news in the queue because HBO Max launched today. HBO Max launched today. They have had a truly fabulous rollout of advertisements. I was walking Thea yesterday and they keep doing these ads where they're like comparing types of content that they have. So they had an old movie. I'm going to mess it up. I don't know what it was. It was giving me Gone with the Wind vibes. Um, and then Oscar the Grouch. And they were like, this one has eight Oscars, eight Oscars and this has one. Oh, you know what? I saw that ad too and I was confused because I thought it said HBO Max. You've got eight Oscars and one Oscar. I'm like, you only have eight movies that have Oscars? <laughs> no, no. So I think it was like that one movie they were showing. Whatever. They're just like doing great I, I hear, Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm Let's excited. See. I mean, I have said I was going to subscribe. I have a brand new Apple TV that has truly changed the course of my life. And I'm downloading that shit ASAP. Also, a little good news for Ben is that Harry Potter has been added to the library, the full catalog of movies. So that's how you could, sure. like, persuade him and be like, I got this for us. I will be sure to not tell him that because he will make me watch it. It's good. Like, there's worse things you could watch. I not really. So. Not for us. Oh, you know, not that it's a news story, but J.K. Rowling did announce another book. It's like a whole new series. Oh, wow. Good for her. Yeah. I'm happy for her. Know that I am. Okay, well, congrats to the HBO Max family. Um, I'm looking forward to more content all the time. Yeah, no, I, I really needed this. I'm very excited. I hope it doesn't flop. Like, I don't think it will. Can you get, um, like, if you pay for HBO, do you get a subscription or it's, like, totally different and separate? Oh, it's so confusing. My newsletter was trying to explain today, like everyone's on a different level and there's like, it's really confusing. There's a website that kind of breaks it down. Like if you get, if you pay for this, you get it. If you don't, like, I don't find it right. now. Because I was downloading all the new apps from my new Apple TV and I downloaded HBO and I guess I downloaded HBO now and I was trying to log in with like my cable and it wouldn't let me. Then you had to go to HBO Go. Like there's so many HBO Go, HBO Now, HBO Max, and then like HBO. Yeah. It, there's a lot they need to consolidate and i guess that's what hbl max is oh i don't know that actually just makes like, sense they should that should be what it is but it probably isn't okay this next story is kind of strange um but i just thought it was interesting and you just want to hear your opinion um the bolivian orchestra has been stranded in a german castle for entire quarantine Lovely. so when quarantine started, the Bolivia Orchestra group was inside the 600-year-old castle in Germany, and now they've been there for three months now. They arrived just before the country went into lockdown and closed its borders. The group of musicians has been keeping busy practicing their instruments as they stroll the grounds of Rheinsberg Palace outside Berlin, which is believed by some to be haunted by the ghost of Sneetch's past. <laughs> <and his> <laughs> <laughs> no, the ghost of Frederick the Great, and is also surrounded by dozens of packs of wolves. So this orchestra is stranded in the haunted castle, and that just sounds like so much fun. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's bucolic for sure. And, you know, I don't know what's better, be stranded in a haunted castle or, like, shacked up in your tiny apartment. Am I supposed to feel bad for these people? What's the point of the story? No, it's just, like, interesting that they got stranded in a castle and they're still there. A lot of people who got stranded in the beginning, like, whether they were on vacation, I remember that article about that couple who, like, was on their honeymoon. They were like, okay, we'll just, like, ride it out here. And then it turned out to be, like, weeks and they, like, were the only ones left and they had to get home and they got home. But this orchestra has not gotten home. Well, I have questions on the logistics of getting stranded. Like, let's say you're at a hotel or you're, like, renting a home and you literally can't leave. Do you still have to pay per night? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. ideal for the homeowner. Yeah, it is. 
So. But what if you can't? What if you can't afford it? If, well, then you need to leave. Like with all of the lockdowns, they gave a little bit of warning, even if it was just like 12 hours that you got right. a GTFO. Yeah. And some people just made the decision to stay where they were. Yeah. Like Kristen Cavallari and our favorite girl, Kelly Ripa. Oh, of course. Of course. So I just feel like that would be like a cool place to be with an orchestra and a castle. It's like so Beauty and the Beast. It's a tale as old as time. That Where's the castle? Movie. Belgium? Yeah. I mean, the movies that are going to come out of quarantine, like different stories, heroic moments, like I'm looking forward sorry. to the content for sure. It's Berlin. Sorry. Not Belgium. Oh, it's Berlin. in Germany. I went to Berlin once. Not my I favorite know. city. I went to Berlin once and I did not feel safe. <laughs> I went to New York once, one in 1981, and I just did not feel safe. I and married I the wrong woman, and now I and lead now a life, I of, a life regret. of regret. I love that movie, Ted. Actually, you know what? I'm going to watch that movie. I haven't seen it in a while. It's so fucking good. If you guys don't know what the scene we're talking about, it's when they go to the aquarium and they, like, start mimicking what the fish are thinking, and it's just so funny. It's so funny. There are so many classic moments in Ted 1 and 2. Was there a Ted 3, or we're, like, we're still championing that concept? We're championing it, but, like, Ted 2 was just a disappointment for me personally. Oh, I totally disagree. Did I ever tell you I met Seth MacFarlane and it took, like, everything inside me not to tell him to make Ted 3? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know that you met him. I don't know if he knew that, like, he was standing across from a girl who was, like, his actual number one fan. I know. It's probably best that he didn't, but we'll always know. Yeah, we'll always have Ted. We will always have Ted. I love Ted. And it's the type of movie that you need to watch. You need a, a long amount of time in between watching it because you want to, like, forget the joke so you can be re-laughed, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, is that the Fast Five? That's the Fast Five. They were pretty fast, and there were five of them. So before we jump into Dear Toasters, which is our advice segment, we are going to introduce a brand-new segment that was birthed from an idea we spoke about earlier this week about, you know, the whole the – whole, industry of mindless news, specifically surrounding one person. Her name is Kelly Ripa. So I think Jackie has a little um, jingle she'd like to sing. Oh, yes. Now it is time for Kelly's mindless news. That is That's not, not what we agreed on. Okay. I don't remember. Kelly's I have to listen to the- news. I have to listen to the Patreon episode because we came up with a jingle for it. It's Kelly's mindless news. If you ever need a reminder, it sounds like Becky G's shower. Like the 4th of July, Kelly's mindless news. <laughs> My ears hurt. Kelly's mindless news, like the 4th of July. No. Pretty good. Yeah, they're no, exactly it, the same. It, it has nothing to do with shower. Kelly's mindless news, like the 4th of July. Are you not hearing it's it? It's not the song. You light me up inside, like the 4th of July. Kelly's mindless snooze. Are you really telling me you don't hear the similarities? Wow, so sad. You have no musical talent. Oh my God, this is like painful. Kelly's mindless snooze, like the fourth of But July. now you're singing it like the song. Jackie, I'm telling you. But, I it, heard but by the way, this was it. It's Kelly's mindless snooze. Kelly's mindless snooze, like the fourth of July. <laughs> Kelly's mindless. Just share the fucking mindless news with us. Okay, in today's segment, my mind is too full, and I need it to be mindless. All right, well here you go. In today's episode, Kelly's mindless news is from the Daily Mail. Thank you, Daily Mail. I don't know how I would survive without knowing that Kelly Ripa revealed she has been covering up a sty in her eye for four weeks, as she jokes she deserves Emmy for special effects makeup. Okay, like Kelly Ripa has confessed she'd been suffering with a stubborn sty in her eye during quarantine. The TV host revealed her issue on Tuesday's episode of Live with Ryan and Kelly, where she joked she deserves an Emmy for makeup special effects after covering up the infection for four weeks. While discussing their primetime Emmy nominations, the 49-year-old said, I also deserve a special Emmy. Oh, she's, oh my God, she's so obnoxious. I guess Emmy nominations came out and they got a bunch. And Kelly said that she deserves one for the Emmy for the special effects like she's like i don't know who got nominated maybe like best director like all the people who work hard and she's like saying she deserves one 
<laughs> oh my God. I can't like, honestly, of all the Kelly's mindless news that we can report on, like her having a sty is kind of crazy. Um, cause just cause like styes are crazy to me. Um, but I, my, I feel like completely mindless. Yeah. And I don't want you to worry. And I don't want anyone at the, you know, listening this, at, listening to this at home to worry because she explained she's been using warm compresses and ointment on the lump. Don't worry. She's, she's all over it. Even though she says those haven't been working, I have but, faith that she will find a regimen that works. And that when she does, she will share it with us and we'll be reading it in People Magazine on the cover. Also, four weeks is a long time to have a sty, no? It's definitely unhealthy. <laughs> um, I actually have had styes my whole life. They're just so annoying. They're not necessarily painful, but more just like the biggest annoyance. They are painful. They can be really painful. When I get them, it's not like I feel like a throbbing. It's like I feel like my eyelid is just like heavy. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh my God, my doorbell just rang. That's crazy. Do you want to go get it? No, 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 it's okay. Okay, well, that was Kelly's mindless. And by the way, people are probably like, you're just leaving someone at the door. No, it's probably just my, they drop off packages and then they ring the doorbell. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to Kelly's mindless news. And now for Dear Toasters. Is there anything else? Do you want to recap anything before we move into our final segment, Dear Toasters? No, what I had wanted to say was that it's crazy that the Vanderpump Rules reunion was not on last night. Instead, it was a Secrets Revealed episode. Um, so I just got to read my book, which I was glad about. But like, since when do we just skip a week for no reason? It's, it's today, Was yesterday a holiday I didn't know about? Maybe they just needed more time to edit together than 19 Zooms. Maybe. That Maybe. would be crazy, though. Yeah. Well, these are unprecedented times, Jackie. Yeah, you're right. Okay, dear toasters. Dear Claudia and Jackie, I want to start by saying I love you. Listening to your show every day gets me through and it keeps me sane. Thank you. My family has a farm a few hours outside of the city I live in, and I've been hiding out there until life returns to normalcy. The only thing is I feel like maybe I don't even want to return to my life after this. Oh my God, I totally feel you. I have good friends, a decent job, a nice apartment, social life, etc. but all this downtime has really got me thinking that I might be ready to leave it all behind and start a new adventure. I don't enjoy texting, calling these friends. It's turned into kind of a chore, and I'm scared I've realized that I don't actually like them. I'm not even really looking forward to going out or returning to the activities I thought I once enjoyed. In fact, I think I might dread that when it happens. Is this normal or the quarantine talking? Would I be missing my friend slash social life if I genuinely enjoyed it? I can't tell if all this downtime is just making me overthink and go a little nuts or if it's time for me to actually start anew. Sincerely, a confused and isolated toaster. Okay. Um, this is definitely like a big question for you and we can't necessarily answer it, but I will say that like this pandemic quarantine is really like a once in a lifetime, hopefully, sort of thing. And if this doesn't make you question your life choices, I don't know what will. I do think that you feeling this way, like that there is a lot of merit to it. I think a lot of people are questioning a lot of things about their lives because you realize in quarantine the things that are important and that we've been just placing value on things that are unimportant. And if you, and I feel like even for me, like this has really made me realize like I live in the wrong city for myself. And it, now's the time to make those changes and you can always blame it on the queue. You know, I think a lot of people are going to be making major changes after this. So if you don't want to like raise a lot of alarm, you just like blame it on the queue. You know, I definitely think you should return back and just see if it was the queue talking or if you go back and you really just don't enjoy the things that used to make you happy. I think that if you just were to never come back, like that might be a mistake, but I think go back when everything returns to normal and just see if like the way that you were feeling is more than just the quarantine talking. Like maybe this is how you actually feel. And I feel like a lot of people who like fled their city apartments and like their city life for like a friend or their family's house, like it really opened your eyes. I think a lot of people who live in cities are having this kind of breakdown. Yeah, and also a lot of people who live in cities are leaving the city, like, not just for quarantine, but, like, permanently or buying second homes, and it's going to be, like, a big migration out of cities, I think, and you can just be a part of that, and I don't think, I don't think that's strange at all. I think good for you for figuring out where you want to be and where you don't want to be. I agree, and good for you for being in tune with those types of emotions and, like, leaning into it. Yeah. Okay, that was a good one. Next up. Hi, Claude and Jack. Ooh, we're on a nickname basis. Actually, she wrote Claude's and Jack's. Cute. Multiples. Plurals. I'm desperately in need of your toasty advice. I'm 23 and live in New York City, but I've been quarantining with my parents in the suburbs for about two months. Shortly after coming home, it was brought to my attention that my extremely hot neighbor was also home for quarantine. We went to high school together. He's a year older than me, but definitely knows who I am because it's a small town. He's tall, dark, and handsome, and so hot, it's sickening. Naturally, I did a bit of sleuthing. He appears to be single and a recent grad of law school. Does he know that law is reason-free from passion? 
I mean, he must know that if he graduated. So first thing you learn, first day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how my sister and I let this opportunity pass us living a few houses down from a total babe in high school, but my job extended work from home through August. So I'm planning to spend the summer upstate, and I feel that there is no time like the present to shoot my shot. I've added him on Instagram, been talking, taking multiple walks a day by his house, run by the filthiest run by in the filthiest Forever 21 crop top I could find for my childhood closet. And we have waved in passing driving by in the car, but nothing has come of my lame pursuits. I've been at this for a few weeks now, and I don't know what to do to get him to notice me and strike up a conversation. Um, what would you guys suggest doing to let him know that I'm admiring from afar? I'm very single. He's very hot, and I'm quite simply at a loss. Help, a very friendly neighbor. P.S. I love you guys so much. I watch daily, and I'd be lost without you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so this is tough. You've got to get his attention. Um, following him on Instagram was a good move. Like, you could, you know find something on Instagram to like send him and start a conversation. Like that's kind of more introverted way to get talking to him. Or like respond to one of his stories. Be like, LOL. Yeah. Or like send him something from like the yard that, you know, the neighbor might find interesting. Or you just like, you go up to him and, and you talk to him. Like you have to find the right time. Maybe you need to organize like a little backyard BBQ. For that's what I was going to say like a little block party. Um, and this feels like a Hallmark movie. And I can't think of any meet cutes that aren't like Hallmarky. you know? Oh, no, you could think of it in the setting of um, Desperate Housewives because this is so something that would happen. Like you could go and be a Susan or you could go and be an Edie to Mike Delfino's house. Like show up with like a pie and like your nipples out. You could do that. That totally works. It works for Edie. Or you can go yeah. the Susan route and be like, hey, Mike, like I need my, clay- my sink unclogged. Yeah, you could definitely show up with a pie and with your nipples out. And I think that that would like garner some success. Um, but you could also just say you need a plumber, like both both avenues work. Um, or you have to just have your parents like call his parents and like invite them. Oh my God, no, do not do that. I think the backyard BBQ was the best option. Like, you know, it's in New York or, State. Oh, okay, okay. Or less. Yeah, yeah, you should have a backyard BBQ for, like, the young people on the block. Turns out it's just you, your sister, and him. And <laughs> may the best woman win. No, we'll show up so, like, it looks like there's more people on the block. Like, it wasn't just so intentional. But actually, I think I'm too beautiful. Like, maybe he would want me. I think yeah, I would we just wouldn't want to distract. I would be yeah. Yeah, so it, it, you're on your own. I just think you've got to – and you know what? Like, everything is temporary. What's the worst that can happen? You know, just put yourself out there. Try and find, like, a cute situation to finagle, you know? Maybe, you, like, are going house to house selling cookies, like, for charity. I don't know. Um, like, a Girl Scout. What you, should do, what you should do is, like, shoot your shot in a major way. And if it blows up in your face, like, don't keep quarantining at your parents' house. Yeah, then you have to come back to the city, change your name, like get a new haircut, and, and like that's fine. Yeah, we can help you. Don't worry. Just backyard BBQ, I think, is the best option here. Yeah, and moral of the story is just is put yourself out there. He not like as much as I'm sure he would be, you know, so happy to be with you. He's also probably just really bored and stuff. And like, does he have siblings? He might be bored in house and in the house bored, and like he just would love someone to come up to him and try and hang out. Yeah, I agree. All right, third and final, dear toasters. I love you all so much, but to get right to it, I have a major question about social media use while in a relationship. My boyfriend and I have been dating for about four years and we just moved in together. I recently saw a girl comment with the fire emojis on his last post, so of course I went to look at her profile. Never heard of her before. I saw that he likes the majority of her posts and even comments some fire emojis on her pics. I'm sure we all agree that fire emoji means hot, right? Can I ask him who she is or what's up with that? Can we ever ask our boyfriends about fire emoji comments? Also, I obviously hearted her fire emoji comment and I'm tempted to just add her to show that I see the virtual interaction, but hello, don't want to be a weirdo and post fire emojis on someone's post when they are in a relationship. Or am I the weirdo? Please help. Fire emojis are very strange. I feel like if he's commenting on someone's public profile fire emojis, like there's not probably anything going on because if there was, they wouldn't be like publicly. But it's just weird. Like if Ben left a fire emoji on like one of like a, like a girl my age, like a, not a celebrity, like just a girl's pick, I would be like, excuse me? Yeah, it would depend on who the person is in relation to my husband. Like if it's his girlfriend like friend girl I mean that would be like a weird comment but I would just be like oh he's having a weird day um (laughs) but like if it was someone that I never heard about I would just I think I would bring it up like what do you think she's hot or like you want to burn it down like what is going on 
Right. Do you hate her so much you want to burn the, fu- <laughs> the flames of her life? Or do you think she's hot? Because it could. You know what? You, know, you can't just assume it's hot. You can't. Yeah, you, he could be saying, like, burn this, burn them all. <laughs> or he could be saying, like, let's have a campfire. Like, there's so many things. No, but, like, ultimately what he's saying is, like, this is flames. Of course. And um, I think, it, like, I, what I would do if I saw it, if I saw a girl, I'm trying to put myself in your situation. If I saw a girl that I didn't know and Zach was, and we're together four years, so, like, you pretty much know everyone in his life, um, and Zach was coming, commenting fire emojis, yeah, I would be fucking disturbed. No, I would, like, I would be mad. And it's just so funny. And, like, I, if I have, like, an issue where, like, Ben does something that, like, I don't agree with, I never have to think about whether or not I'm going to bring it up. Like, I just storm into the other room and, like, attack him. Maybe I should start thinking before I speak. Yeah, like, maybe I should, like, keep some stuff closer to the <laughs> chest and then, like, yeah, closer to the vest and then be, like, and you did this and you left fire emojis. Oh. Well, Ben totally does that. Like, because whenever we fight, he has like a fucking roster of things he wants to talk to me about. And he's like, well, can you think of an example? I'm like, no, I don't write. Oh my God. That's the worst. Can you think of an example? No, I'm, I'm trying to forget. No. And that doesn't make my argument less valid. The fact that I didn't write down in the moment, like five months ago, something that made me upset. If anything, it makes me a normal human being. No, it's like, it bothered me so much. I tried to forget about it. Yeah. Or it's just like, Fuck off. Like, I just, I, I honestly, fighting with Ben is infuriating because he's a very good fighter. Oh, damn, that's tough. I feel like that's like fighting with me. I would not want to be in a fight with me. I would rather die. Like, literally run me over with a car, throw me into a flames emoji. I would literally rather be dead than ever have like an actual argument with you. Like, over our lives, we've of course have like maybe like five or 10 arguments. And like, they're some of the worst times in my life. Like, I never want to fight with you. Yeah, what's good for all my, like, enemies, though, is that I hate fighting, so it's not like I, enjoy, like, I don't go seeking fights. Like, it, it pains me to get to that place, but once I'm there, hello. She's fucking ruthless, you guys. Ruthless. Um, she, no, I just, very I just strategic. Facts. Like, she, she spits facts, but, like, you know, they're, they're strategically placed facts. And no, I just, like, fighter. I just really have, like, the power of words, you know? I guess. You're just a good fighter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, by the way, like, this isn't, like, a total deal breaker, this flame situation, but just bring it up. Like, bring it up. I feel like if he's doing it so, like, out and open, like, not trying to hide it, it's probably not anything salacious, but it might be something you want to talk to him about stopping doing because it's, like, he's out on, on social media being a public representation of your relationship, and that might not be what you want people to think. And, like, maybe he doesn't know, like, that the flames emoji, like, yeah, it means, like, looking good, but it's also, like, oh, I want to fuck. Sexy. Um, you know, sometimes, like, older people like us, like, sometimes I'll find out what an emoji means, and I'm like, what? It's, it's, it's just a splash. It's just an eggplant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are, were our Dear Toasters. Please submit Dear Toasters uh, to us. You can email deartoasters at gmail.com. It is always anonymous. Thank you to everyone who braved the uncharted waters of deer toasters. It's good stuff. Okay, I think that's all she wrote. I really do. Yeah, I think her hand hurts and so does mine. So thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we go live Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us on Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye.